Well, this morning, the Israeli military says two hostages are now free after a special operation in Rafah in Gaza. They've been identified as 60-year-old Fernando Marman and 70-year-old Luis Har. Both were kidnapped during the October 7th Hamas attacks. This news comes days after Israel signaled a new phase in its war on Hamas, which is expected to include a ground offensive in Rafah. That's in southern Gaza, where the U.N. says more than one million civilians are taking shelter. It's raised concerns about the potential human toll of any operation. Those concerns extend to the White House. President Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the phone for about 45 minutes yesterday, with the White House in a readout after the call saying that Biden, quote, reaffirmed his view that a military operation in Rafah should not proceed without a credible and executable plan for ensuring the safety of and support for the more than one million people sheltering there. Joining us now, the latest spokesperson for the Israeli government, Elon Levy. Uh, we appreciate your time. T to start with, do we have any updates on the condition uh, of the hostages? Obviously, big news, uh, very good news last night about the operation that secured their release. Uh, do we have any news on their condition right now? Those hostages are in good and stable condition. Everyone in Israel waking up to the very welcome news that the army, in a daring special forces mission, managed to rescue those two hostages from the heart of Rafa. Uh, they had been held in an apartment block inside uh, Gaza, where Hamas had been trying to use neighboring areas as human shields. They are home. That's two more home and another 134 to go. Is there uh, a sense that there are more hostages in that area, in that vicinity, and that more operations like this operation last night could commence soon? We know that we are now approaching uh, an impending incursion into Rafah because the Israeli army has already dismantled most of Hamas throughout the Gaza Strip. Hamas started this war with the October 7 massacre with 24 battalions. We've now destroyed 18 of those battalions, two more on their last legs in Khan Yunis, and another four in Rafah. So we absolutely expect that Hamas will be holding hostages uh, in the southern Gaza Strip, whether in the tunnels, it has built under civilian areas or in civilians' homes, as we were shocked to discover from the survivors of Hamas captivity. And we're going to continue applying military pressure to rescue those hostages and extract them by force where possible, or otherwise to put the military pressure necessary to get Hamas to release them. This appeared to be an extensively planned and, as you noted, a daring mis mission of sorts. If there's a large-scale operation in Rafa, what assurances can you provide hostage families that those hostages that could be there, that are still there, will be safe? We're taking every possible measure that we can to keep the hostages safe, but Hamas is brutally holding them in captivity. We fear they're being starved and tortured and raped. And so can we give assurances that the hostages are safe? as long as they aren't in the hands of the terrorists who perpetrated the October 7 massacre? Of course not. The only assurances we can give is that we will continue fighting to put military pressure to bring them back home. Because only once they are safely back in Israeli territory, in their families' arms, can we guarantee their safety. And that's what we're doing. Elon, will you provide, or have you provided, I guess, behind the scenes, a plan to the White House? The president made very clear in the readout of his call with the prime minister last night. It has to be a credible and executable plan to ensure the safety of those that have moved from the north to the south before a large-scale operation in Rafah commences. A very important conversation, by the way, between the Prime Minister and the President, in which the White House made clear that we share a goal of seeing Hamas defeated and long-term security for Israel and its people. Now, as the army goes into Rafah, the Prime Minister has asked the army to come up with a plan to help evacuate them. And in order to evacuate them, we need help from the UN agencies on the ground. Unfortunately, until now, they have been resisting our efforts to get civilians for safety. At every turn in this war, as we secured humanitarian corridors for civilians to evacuate, complying with our obligations under international law, the UN has been accusing us of forced displacement for trying to help civilians get out of areas where terrorists are trying to use them as human shields. And those UN agencies now have a fateful choice to make. Are they trying to save Hamas or are they trying to save civilians? Because they're not going to be able to keep Hamas's last four battalions on their feet, but they can help us get civilians to safety so that Hamas terrorists cannot use them as human shields. Elon Levy, we appreciate your time. Thank you.